On today's episode of the Locked On Global Podcast, we are identifying three elite players in the transfer portal that Pat Kelsey and the Louisville Cardinals should go after. With that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Global Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. As always, I want to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day, just a reminder, the Locked On Global podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. The dead period lifts on Thursday afternoon. Global has already added three players to next year's team. We're going to talk about three elite transfer portal players that could help Pat Kelsey and the Louisville Cardinals ultimately get back to the NCAA tournament. Um, We'll begin with Arizona's Omar Ballo, Stanford's Maxime Raynaud, and Oklahoma State's Javon Small. Now, I understand that many different players can help Louisville get back to the NCAA tournament. I'm not making the suggestion or hinting at the notion that these are the only three players. Now, you feel like that would be a given, but... I promise you there are some people that say, well, this player can help you get there, and that player can help you get there. Well, of course, there's a lot of players in the transfer portal, um, a good amount of really, really good players that can help Louisville get there, Terrence Edwards being one of them, Dante Maddox Jr., the top scorer from Toledo, who Jody Demling, a Cardinal authority of 24-7 Sports, uh, said on Monday that he would be visiting the Cardinals program. But ultimately – If you want to ensure that you're going to get back to the tournament, that is the expectation. Don't get me wrong. Getting to the NCAA tournament is the expectation. These three players, I feel like not only are very, very good as it stands, but they also fit what Pat Kelsey is seemingly going to want to do with the Louisville Cardinals. We start out with the um, arguably top portal player out there. That is Omar Ballo from Arizona. Um, Pretty familiar name that people know has spent, um, excuse me, three seasons with Arizona after spending his first year with Gonzaga. Played 24 games with the team that lost in the national championship game. Averaged two points per game. Since then, he has gotten better and better this past season. Took a little bit of a statistical um drop in points per game with 12.9 he went from 14.2 to 12.9 but improved field or improved improved field goal percentage um didn't shoot a single three-pointer hasn't shot a single three-pointer in his collegiate career um and took a little bit of a step back in free throw percentage as well but the points per game doesn't really worry me when you had Caleb Love and Pella Larson and some other players get the majority of the shots. Balo was never the focal point of uh, Tommy Lloyd's offense uh, unless the idea was to get it down low, and then Omar Balo was the go-to guy. Balo is – let me phrase it this way. If Louisville is – if the rumors are right and Louisville was going to throw a, a good amount of money at John L. Davis with the NIL budget that they have, then in my opinion, you should be doing the same thing with Balo. For starters, there are more guards that are Louisville level in the portal than there are big men. At the moment, there's not a ton of really um, really skilled power five level big men. And so that means that there's a little bit more of an emphasis when it comes to front court players in the transfer portal just because of the numbers. And if you want to get back to the portal, or you want to get back to the portal, you want to get back to the tournament, making sure you address the front court in the portal and adding some key guys would be huge. Balo is not a three-point shooter. People say, well, 
I mean, how would that fit a Pat Kelsey offense? I think we have to get out of this notion that if a player can't shoot threes, then he's automatically not going to be on Pat Kelsey's team. That's not the case here. Actually, when you look at the College of Charleston and the way that they played it, even back to his Winthrop days, rebounding and an interior presence is extremely key. It actually works really well for a five-out system. Or I, I say that five-out, a five-out system, a, a system that's going to utilize a lot of three-pointers. Balo moves really well for his seven-foot, 260-pound frame, the native of Mali. Um, has shown that he can compete at the nation's highest level. He was a multiple-year starter. He started, what is that, 71 of the last 71 games for Arizona. That is um, one of the nation's top teams over the past season, and it's not like he was not important. What he did on the defensive end, the gravity of him in the middle of that defense with him being a very, very good defender, averaging over a block per game in each of his three seasons out in Tucson. Look, I think that, sure, in a Pat Kelsey offense, you, you need to be able to shoot. The majority of the team needs to be able to shoot. The majority of the players on the team. But if you have a couple players that can do the rest of what Kelsey's looking for, that is give you a ton of energy inside, defend well, move well, ability to set screens. Like I said, Balo being at seven foot, he moves well in screens. He's able to set the screen and then roll off of it and get to the rim. He's a lob threat, obviously, with that size. But he's got a growing post game. Obviously, the skill set, I believe, is, is refining which eat with each and every season. So one statistic that I will point out, and this really – I think proves the point that Balo would fit seamlessly with this. First of all, Balo would fit anywhere because he's that good of a player. Don't get lost in the 13.10 rebound um, averages from last season. Now you're saying, well, Brandon Huntley half will average that. Yes, Balo was like the fourth option on that team. And the strength that he has, the tenacity around the rim – He's very efficient around the rim, solid defender, rim protector. And that statistic, don't want to get too far off track. In the past five years, so you take College of Charleston and Winthrop, the past five college basketball seasons, four of those, a Pat Kelsey coach team has been in Ken Palm's top 20 in offensive rebounding percentage. The one season in which they weren't in the top five, or I'm sorry, one season in which they weren't in the top 20, they were 43rd in the country. So the outlier of the, of the past five seasons is 43rd. Now, granted, you're going up against, you know, lesser talented teams, but you're coaching a mid-major. So it's like the, the size is still comparable. And, and you saw with how College of Charleston utilized the big man over the past couple of seasons that Omar Vallo would be able to fit right into this team. He would be able to raise the ceiling immediately, potentially, potentially outside of maybe um, John L. Davis, maybe this next guy that we're going to talk about, Maxime Raynaud. Maybe the most impactful player that you could add in the portal in this cycle. He is that good and that impactful because he makes an impact on both ends of the court. Now, I understand he doesn't really stretch the floor that well. It is what it is. What he does is he is very good around the rim. He has to improve the free throw percentage. Um, he shot about five free throws per game this year and was under 50%. Last year, it was six attempts and 57%. He has to improve that. If he can get to a spot to where he's at 65%, I, I think that you take that. Um, he has to be better shooting uh, the free throws. But I've seen some Louisville fans say, no, I think we're good because he's not that good of a free throw shooter. I've actually seen that. And I'm like, don't do this. Don't cling on to free throw percentage as, as a reason why you shouldn't go after Bolo. Now, the, every – Top program in the country is going to go after this guy. I'm not naive enough to suggest that just because I'm including them in this list, this isn't a reflection of 
of how likely they are to come to Louisville. I would mention it if that were the case, but he just entered the portal on Monday today. If you're listening to this on Monday evening, it's, I mean, it's every team's going to go after this guy. And for good reason, he's a very, very good player and he will have to improve free throw percentage. Don't get me wrong. But outside of that, I mean, you're talking about an absolute game changer. He's the number one player in the portal, according to what 24 seven sports for a reason. He's that good. CBS Sports, I think he's top eight. On three, I think he's top two. But Omar Balo is the first elite player that I believe Louisville should go after. Sticking with the front court, a player that entered the portal a couple weeks ago, Maxime Raynaud from Stanford. A little bit of a different skill set than Balo, but he could have a similar impact. And we'll explain why here in just a moment after we tell you about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to to go to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy that, in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. That's LinkedIn.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Cardinal fans, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. There are a couple players in this transfer portal class that I think that you consider to be elite. Um, Really, depending on which recruiting service you're going to look at will dictate the rankings, which will probably lead you to believe whether or not a transfer portal player is elite. I think Omar Balo is... Probably universally considered elite. Another player that's universally considered elite is Stanford big man Maxime Raynaud. Um, the seven foot one native of Paris, France, has spent three seasons with the Stanford Cardinal. Um, it took him some time to get acclimated with the college game, played 29 games, started five his freshman year, uh, started 23 of 33 the year after that, and then had a breakout season where he started all but one. Saw his minutes increase to about 29 per game. 57% on 11 attempts from the field. um, And averaged 9.6 rebounds per game, respectively. Not necessarily known for being a a true defender. He's not really a rim protector. He's not known to be a rim protector. But he has a skill set that's fairly different than Omar Balo. Yes, both of them are very crafty around the basket. Raynaud is listed as one inch taller. Um, Raynaud is a player I think that utilizes more of a finesse uh, around the basket, although he's more of a stretch big in that he can stretch the floor and knock down the deep ball. Um, You look at the statistics, they're actually fairly impressive, 36% on two attempts per game. For a big man, I'd say for a guy that's seven foot one and not really known as like a guard-like player, like a, I mean, heck, like a, Victor Wembanyama or Chet Holmgren, he's more of a big man that can step out and he uh, that can hit the deep ball. Um, he has some strength as well, being 250 pounds. Both Balo and Raynaud both have solid footwork. Raynaud is very good when he gets the ball down on the baseline and he usually does that drop step or the spin move to get down to the low block that allows him to get towards the basket. And at that point, it's a tough size disadvantage for the competition. 
Stanford, he obviously played in a Power 5 league and was able to um, show out against some pretty solid competition in the Pac-12. You look at his game log from this season. Didn't have the greatest game in the quarterfinal of the Pac-12 tournament against Washington. Only had five points and four rebounds. But before that, had 21-13 and 13 against Cal, 20-8 and eight against Cal, 26-12 and 12 against Eddie Lampkin Jr. and Colorado. Um, there were situations this year where at times it seemed like he disappeared and scored under 10 points per game, but he scored in double digits more often than not, over 20 points multiple times. He actually had 29 and six against Arizona and went five of six from the three point line. Um, that was, I think, his only game in which he made over two threes in a contest. But nonetheless, I think Maxime Reynaud is. Considered to be one of the most elite big men in the portal, if not the top big man in the portal, because of that craftiness. Um, I look at him to be a serviceable defender. If you're looking for rim protection, Maxime's probably not your guy, but he's still a very, very serviceable defender. Offensively, he moves well, being seven foot one, um, operates extremely effectively out of the pick and roll situation for a Pat Kelsey offense. I can only imagine, you know, the ability to uh, pick and pop in that offense, spot up shooting, stretching the floor, uh, a seven foot one guy that can shoot threes, rebound and be efficient around the rim. Seems like um, as seamless as a fit for a Pat Kelsey offense as it would seem to get. So um, I, I'm not necessarily sure just how likely this would be. If Louisville were to reach out to him, he's probably in that same caliber of player like John L. Davis and like Omar Ballo to where you can back up the Brinks truck and really get involved with the NIL side of things here because of the impact that he could put on the court. He has one year, I think one year of, yes, one year of eligibility remaining. And I think it would be a, a really, really solid player in the front court that would help this team out. There's some that believe that North Carolina might be the landing spot, which I guess would make sense. Alabama as well, considering that they just made the final four. Grant Nelson moves on. Uh, they got some other um, veteran players that can move on and Obviously, you would be able to you know, play in that system that Nate Oates likes to prioritize with the big men. For Louisville, it's a matter of pitching the NIL side of things. Obviously, he would be a penciled-in starter for Louisville, as he probably would be a penciled-in starter wherever he goes. North Carolina loses Armando Baycott and some other players. If you made me choose between the two, this is a tough one. If you made me pick whether I would rather have Omar Ballo or Maxime Reynaud, both have one year of eligibility remaining. I'm going to go with Omar Ballo here. I think that, yes, the three-point difference, it's pretty substantial, but I think having a true rim protector can change the dynamic of your defense. And Pat Kelsey's defenses haven't really been known for being like strongholds of the team. So having a defense that is um, anchored by a shot blocker like Balo, I think it would make a ton of sense. I think it would make a, a good amount of sense to where you can um, – you can sort of look over the three-point shooting, and if Louisville gets some of these players that they're going after, then three-point shooting shouldn't be an issue. And um, it's really, would you rather have a very, very good shot blocker or a guy who can stretch the floor and knock down a couple threes? I'm going to go with Balo here. You could go with Maxime Reynaud, and I would not complain one bit. They are both probably universally ranked in the top five of all of the transfer portal rankings for a reason. And that's because they obviously are, have played very, very good at the Pac-12 level. It's very clear that Louisville will need to address the front court. They have one player committed in the front court. That's James Scott, freshman from College of Charleston, that averaged under five points a game last year. I, I look for him to be a rotational player at best. 
So you're, you're probably needing to get multiple, multiple players at the position, regardless of the system that you're trying to run. But let's go to the backcourt. This one, we talked about universally elite, being considered universally, universally elite. This player from the Big 12 might not necessarily be considered universally elite, but personally, I think he is probably one of the top three to five guards in the portal at this time. And we'll tell you who that is and explain why I believe that's the case here momentarily. Before we do that, I want to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked on Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, including WHAS11.com and YouTube. So be sure to like, subscribe, share, leave a comment, ask any questions you have that you want included in the next mailbag uh, that will be happening at the conclusion of this week. So there's only a handful of players across the country that are considered to be universally elite in the portal. And I don't want to throw that term elite out there lightly. It is as good as advertised. A player that can change the ceiling of your team. This player has been ranked anywhere inside the top 10, according to a couple of services, and not even ranked inside the top 20. But for me, I think Javon Small... Guard from Oklahoma State is elite. And I think he is a player that fits what Wolva would be wanting to do on the offensive side of the court. And I believe that he would be able to um, help Wolva get to the next level and ultimately help them to get them to the NCAA tournament. Small has one year of eligibility remaining. He transferred to Oklahoma State to Oklahoma State after spending two years at East Carolina, averaged 15.8 for the Pirates in his final season. 15.8, 5.6 assists, 4.8 rebounds. He goes to the Big 12, the 6'3", native of South Bend, Indiana, started all 31 games for the Cowboys this past season. Averaged 15.1 points per game, 4.7 rebounds, 4.1 assists, and one steal per contest. 44, 37, 87 shooting splits. So, Javon Small, in my opinion, if you're going to talk about elite guards in the portal, a player that played in the toughest conference in America, toughest defensive conference as well by far, Scoring 15 points per game, that's elite to me. That is as elite as it gets. Now, it might not he might not necessarily be on John L. Davis's level, but he's very close. The six foot three guard fits what Pat Kelsey is looking for on both ends of the court. Defensively, he is a ball hawk, one steal per game. You watch him on the defensive end, solid instincts, active hands, ability to read opposing passes and jump into lanes and be able to get the ball and get out in transition. Very, very quick and shifty guard. Moves really, really well for being a guy that's six foot three, almost moves like guys like 5'10", that just once he gets the ball, boom, he can get to the other end of the court very, very quickly. That's just the defensive end. Offensively, I mean, everything this guy does – screams like a great fit for this offense. Number one, he is shooting the ball at a very high level. In his second season at Eastern Carolina, 33% on six attempts. This season, 5.3 attempts, 37%. So not only is he a solid shooter when his number is called, when he takes the shot, but he's sort of a volume three-point shooter. And he's not just able to flourish in catch and shoot situations, but he can create his own shot. That shiftiness and that tight dribble and handle allow him to get into that shot and get to his spots. And he's very, very good in that regard. So perimeter shooting, check. Ability to get out in transition, check. Active defender, check. Let's go a little bit further down the line. 
He is a willing passer, over 20% assist rate, averaging 4.1 assists. If he's able to increase that number by even one, I think he would be probably the go-to ball handler for Louisville next season. He could be the point guard. He's shown the ability to not only be able to operate really, really well with the ball in his hands, but also have the composure and patience to play off ball and wait for his opportunity. Um, Has a great feel for the half-court game. Uh, Is able to shoot well coming off the screens, which Pat Kelsey's offense is very, very active when it comes to setting pick and rolls, backdoor screens, uh, the delayed handoffs. Not only can he operate as the guy coming off of the pin down and and getting the shot, but he's also a solid pick and roll ball handler and can find the open man and create his own shot. Getting around the rim, he is very efficient in the paint. 44% overall on 11 attempts per contest. Now, outside of the other two, I can tell you, according to – I do want to uh, find this before I – I guess I should have already found this, but um, wanted to give credit to the actual – okay, Jamie Shaw of On3.com says the Oklahoma State transfer Javon Small has heard from the following schools, Louisville included, also included in this list, to show you the caliber of player, uh, Villanova, Indiana, Texas Tech, Kansas State, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Michigan, Kansas, Texas, the list goes on. I think it's very much a telltale sign when you look at this and you see a lot of schools that he played against in the Big 12 are going after him. I think that that is a telltale sign that he is legit, as good as advertised. I think he fills everything that Pat Kelsey would be looking for in a potential point guard. So it would make a lot of sense. Like if there is a player in the portal that you say, okay, find me the best player you can that fits Kelsey's system to a T. It's it's Javon Small, hands down. In my opinion, it's Javon Small. So um, elite to me, I personally think he is a elite level prospect in the portal. I think he is a guy that can help you get to the NCAA tournament along with Maxime Raynaud and Omar Ballo. So ultimately, it's going to depend on if the Cardinals can get either or any of these three players on a visit. They're not going to be, um, you know, it's not going to be easy to compete against some of the schools that you're going to have to compete against. The NIL money is going to be probably through the roof for all three of these guys. But if you can land just one, then you can take your team to a new height. You can raise the ceiling, and ultimately you can put yourself in a very, 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 very good position to get back to the NCAA tournament. One player is not going to make the difference, but we've seen how one player can make such a key impact. So um, tomorrow's episode of the show, we will continue along in Transfer Portal Talk. Jamie Shaw has logged in a prediction for what we'll to add a player from the SEC. We'll talk about that on tomorrow's episode of the show, but everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here 